Q&A number two. So in the previous video, I, I, as I expected, I ran out of time very quickly after three questions. So in this video, this video is number two, Q&A number two. As I said, uh, I encouraged you to post questions on YouTube and Facebook. I do encourage you to continue uh, posting these questions and I will be uh, answering these questions every now and then recording this kind of a Q&A session. Ideally, these questions should be predominantly um, about not necessarily research related things because I firstly, I post a research related uh, content very often and I do encourage you to make suggestions in the comments for what to address, what kind of video to record. And secondly, if I was to answer these questions in this Q&A, again, it would take up the whole video. So I would rather listen to your suggestions about possible research problems that you have and record a full video rather than talking about it in the Q&A. So in the Q&A, I'm happy to talk about all things generally, all things research, but mainly not research. Okay, let's jump straight into it. Okay, I'll start with uh, question number one. It's it's a very, I have my questions here, by the way, that's why I'm, I'm looking here. Uh, it's a very good question. It's a long question. It has several questions in this, in this one question, which is something you want to avoid in questionnaires or research uh, or interviews. You don't want to ask questions where there is more than one question in one question, but of course <laughs> it's very welcome here in this Q and A. So I'm very happy. Kim uh, Pil Pilado, Kim Pilado, uh, asks several questions. How young, I like it, how young, how young are you now? And were there times you think you made a wrong decision doing the PhD? Did you also have times daydreaming so much that you procrastinated and procrastinated? What's the best way to get back on track? Thank you, professor. So many good questions. Yeah, how young I am. I'm 36. Yeah, <laughs> 36. I have to remember constantly, it's so hard was easier in the past. I'm 36. Uh, were there times that I thought I made a wrong decision about my PhD? There were many times that I thought I made a wrong decision. Believe me, I think more, I don't know, maybe 50% of my the whole, you know, PhD journey. And then after, uh, afterwards as well. So when I graduated, there were even more times when I thought I did I made a bad decision. So when I was looking for a job after the PhD, I, it was hard. I say, I say that and I mentioned that in several videos, it was very hard to get a job. And that's especially when you start thinking, was this the right decision? I wanted to go back to cooking, to, to being a chef. That's what I, uh, that's what I did before this whole education and research thing. I was a chef for almost 10 years. Uh, there were many times that I, I doubted this decision, believe me, many, many, many times. Uh, what to do about this? Well, uh, one thing that you can kind of do about this is to simply prepare. Prepare during your PhD, prepare for uh, what you want to do after the PhD. So, uh, and I think that's the main thing. That's the main thing because usually when we we're fixated on that goal of, okay, I'll stay in academia, I'll teach, I'll be a lecturer. Usually this is not very, this is not a very realistic point of view. I'm sorry to say that, but nowadays it's just not that realistic. It's still possible, but it's best to have a certain plan, you know, plan B, or as I said in one of my videos, ideally academia should be your plan B. You should have plan A where something safer in the industry or so something else. So basically, you shouldn't just, you know, put all eggs in one basket and, and just say, yeah, I'm going to be in academia because that's when you may struggle if something goes uh, wrong, not according to the plan. So that's one thing to be prepared for different things, plan your career very well and start preparing for it very well. I also talk about it in one of my videos when I say start getting some experience, like even presenting in a l little mini conference or even to your, you know, to a class, to a workshop. Even the smallest things like this can later be used in a great way in your CV. So, so this is what I mean, gaining experience. I'm not talking gain experience teaching because you may not have this opportunity. And finally, if you really feel, I, I'm, I know this may be a little bit controver controversial, but if you really feel that there is no way you will need this, you know 100% that you hate every moment of it. You know 100% that 
this is not you and this is not what you want to do and perhaps there is another reason perhaps you want to spend time with your family you don't feel like you're happy with your family i've noticed uh, online uh, lots of groups and i i often see that uh, this kind of a concern being raised and people say uh, this kind of things that you know something like what i just listed and and others usually say stay strong go continue you know you will regret it don't quit and i'm not sure how i feel about this i usually say look i've said that many times in previous videos family goes first your health goes first your happiness goes first if any of these you know if if phd gets in a way in a way of any of these and at the same time you just feel it's not for you i usually say leave it leave it you'll be happier do whatever it takes to be happy i know it's not like i said it's not traditional common kind of uh, advice but this is how i feel i feel if you really don't want to do this don't do this and finally yeah this was a long question i just realized there's still one more do i ever procrastinate i procrastinate a lot <laughs> Yes, I procrastinate a lot. I daydream a lot. I daydream plenty all the time. And um, with procrastination, when I work, when I do my, for example, data analysis assignments, I I sometimes procrastinate way more than I work. So I um, so I basically, let's say, I for every five minutes of my data analysis, I then get on Facebook or whatever for ten or fifteen minutes, or, or on YouTube, that just watching random stuff so yeah i do procrastinate it's a problem that i'm working on so so i'm not sure i'm the best person to uh, to give you advice how to for how to you know overcome this problem no to be honest joking aside i think uh it's normal it's normal to procrastinate uh we do need to do you know take our minds off work for for some time you asked how to get back on track i think by planning by planning by being realistic again i've done videos before in the past where i talk about planning and being realistic um i think by uh, by planning and by by planning your breaks your days off uh, and again just being realistic about the workload i think that's how you get back on track because if you're not being realistic about your workload and your plan you will become discouraged quickly because you'll realize for example that you're not going to finish that chapter writing that chapter or you're not going to finish that data analysis and why is that because you are not realistic you thought you're finish it you're going to finish it on monday or tuesday you know and it was a week ago so you're just not realistic it's better to always have like you know extra time just to plan uh to plan more time for every task that you really need so that's one of the things i talk about this in in my other videos so i don't want to talk about this for too long but that's basically yeah by planning and planning your times off that's very important having times off that's how you get back on track and daydreaming is a yeah, completely different story i don't think it's a bad thing to be honest i think uh, i'm sure i've read even research about daydreaming and i think it's a sign of intelligence so think about that when you when you feel guilty about about daydreaming and now there is uh, probably just time for two more questions. Again, it just takes ages, doesn't it, for me to respond to these questions. Uh, I will respond to one research-related uh, question and one uh, personal question. So the the first one, research-related question, how do you stay... So this was asked by Ice, uh, Ice uh, S. 100% sure I mispronounced this. Sorry, and, and the question is how, how to stay calm when qualitative study isn't going as planned and when do you know it's time to change your protocol? It's quite a hard question, I think. Uh, how, do, how do you generally stay calm when things going are going not as planned? I think it's about our personality, again, about planning, probably, being realistic. Uh, it's just being able to assess the situation so you know, you know something is... Uh, how do you know something is not going as planned if you're let's say if you're uh, noticing that you you're failing to recruit participants as many as you wanted you may just keep trying or again it may be a sign of your poor planning i i wouldn't want to say that because i don't know your situation of course but i'm, I'm just generalizing now 
Uh, so it, it can be a sign of many things. So again, it's kind of, I think it's, it goes back to preventing that from happening. So, so before, you know, so planning and trying to make sure that it won't go, you know, that wrong. Of course, it will never go exactly as planned, but I'm here talking about like a complete failure and disaster. Otherwise, you just have to deal with what you have, you know, at, at your disposal. So I guess for me, uh, you know, I was, let's say, one of the studies I remember involved diaries and I, I could hardly collect any diaries. I imagined everybody would just keep writing and sending me these diaries. And in practice, I had literally a handful of entries. How did I manage that? It's just, I just dealt with it. I knew I had different methods, other methods as well. And I just knew this is never going to be my main method. So, uh, so I just, and then I explained what happened. So I think it's usually the, the right, you know, the way to deal with it. Sometimes it may be about changing the protocol, like you said. Again, if you just feel it's definitely definitely not going to work, you may change, you know, this methodology or protocol. But uh, I would say that usually this should be should have been picked up uh, way earlier than this. So either by yourself or your supervisors or somebody else. If it's that wrong, that it won't you know ever uh, work. So I think uh, that's yeah that's that's what should have happened. You should have planned it, and you should have made sure. You should have made sure. Yeah, <laughs> that was that was a long sentence. Uh, that uh, this will never happen. And now finally, uh, for this in this video, that will be the final question. How do you relax? I like it. It's very open ended. I really like it. I'm I'm worried again about the time, uh, so I'll have to make it quick. There are so many ways, uh, I mean, so many different things that I like doing. I would say usually the first things that come to my mind uh, are reading and uh, playing PlayStation. I love uh, playing, I don't really play many games, but uh, FIFA and also FIFA is something I've been playing for, wow, probably about 21 years now, 20 years. Uh, I remember all the way back to FIFA 96, basically. So. Uh, so yeah, it has been almost like my, I think, almost, not almost, I think it's been my addiction, <laughs> to be honest. FIFA, uh, The Last of Us, as I said in my, I think, my previous Q&A video, uh, is another of my, fa one of my favorite games. Then on computer, I play with, uh, I play PUBG, <laughs> Player Unknown Battlegrounds, which is like a multiplayer shooter. It's great. So, so, so these are the less, uh, let's say, productive ways. Uh, to relax because we cannot just you know nobody's um, perfect nobody's just relaxing in a you know in a in a most perfect ideal way so so you know i i like relaxing like doing nothing like i said playing a game um i do like spending time with my family with my children and going outside so i so that's like a whole new category of relaxing so nature as you may be aware I moved to a new place that's why I don't have an office now <laughs> uh, so nature and now I'm getting into kayaking so I'm buying a kayak because I live by the sea never done this before but I want to start I love camping as well um, another way watching football so now going back to the passive <laughs> passive category with my playing games and in this kind of thing so I, I like uh, watching football. I'm a big football fan. Uh, Manchester United is my team. So again, it's, uh, I'm, I'm a real, real big fan of, of football. So uh, not sure if you can tell in, you know, from my videos, <laughs> probably not, but, but I'm a huge fan. I, I haven't missed a game in, in years. So yeah, so that's uh, how that's my passive category, passive relaxing. Uh, I love cooking. I, I did mention that I'm not sure either. Yeah, I think in this video that I used to be a chef, but I generally love cooking. So that uh, is a relaxing. This is something that helps me relax as well. As well, uh, cooking. So it's not just a responsibility. I do love cooking. So you know, doing making dinner for everybody, and so yeah. Then I have a mixes of these different things. So I love, for example, going camping and cooking. So if I go camping, there is no way there won't be good food. So for me, camping and cooking is just just goes uh, hand in hand. So when I go camping, I love uh, to cook some food there too. So uh, I think that's about it. But I'm sure there are plenty of other ways in which I relax. But I think these these are the first ones that come to my mind. Yeah. So thanks uh, for your time again. Uh, hopefully 
you did enjoy this video. I hope that uh, by choosing both personal and research related questions, you still you can still learn something uh, useful, not just uh, uh, learn something about myself. So I'll keep recording these because I still have lots of questions to address. I can't believe I think I just answered five questions <laughs> in two videos. So do keep these questions, uh, do keep posting these questions and I'll, I'll probably just keep recording these Q&As. So take care and like the video if you enjoyed the content.